let me share a screen here so we can take a look at some of the things in this course. So again, my name is Alex Nunez. I'm a curriculum developer at CodeHS. And so for today, we'll be going over just an overview of the course itself, uh, Tracy and Espanol. And then we're gonna go over where to access the materials for the course, any sort of resources that we have for it. And then towards the end of our uh, meeting here, we'll, I'll open it up for any questions. And so we could get those things answered for you. So let's get started. Uh, so the first thing is up is the overview of the course. This course is a one semester course. Um, it's, it could be a little bit shorter, it could be a little bit a little bit longer depending on the pace of the students, but it's designed for one semester, it can be used for high school and also middle school. So it's kind of in that in between where it can be pretty challenging and also easy enough for middle school students to, to grasp everything. So uh, it's used uh, to introduce Python and it could also be used to just introduce uh, programming in, in general. So they're very, uh, you can utilize it for a, a lot of different things in your classroom. So it is intended for complete beginners. So there's no previous background in computer science needed. Uh, like I said, it could be used just to introduce programming in general, or if students have already gone through some of the Carol and JavaScript courses on CodeHS, Tracy uh, and Espanol can be used to introduce now the, the Python programming language. Um, so yeah, let's look at the module breakout. So the whole the whole course is composed of six modules and they each cover different important uh, concepts in programming. And then there are a few uh, extra modules towards the end if you need a little bit more material. Uh, we definitely have some supplemental material as well, but it's composed of six main modules. Let's look, take a look at them. The first one is El Mundo de Tracy, which is Tracy's world. And in this module, students just work through exercises to gain an understanding of the grid that they'll be working in. Um, they'll be moving Tracy around in, in this grid. So students need to really know the coordinate system. And they also learn some of the basic commands that, that Tracy can understand. So you'll see here, just a, a simple program, just creating some lines here, but it gets students into their comfort zone and, and learning how to just work with, with Tracy in, in general. And then next up, they move on to moviendo a Tracy eficientemente, just moving Tracy efficiently. And in this one, students learn how to use for loops. And so they get to see how you create this program with 20 lines of code uh, before you use for loops. And then using for loops, you get to narrow that down to like five lines of code. So uh, that's always a huge, a huge moment when, when students get to see that um, because they're so used to writing these huge long programs. And then all of a sudden, they just need a few lines of code and then they, they get the same thing done. So in, the, in this module, students will get to practice that. And then in the third module, it's called designing and communicating solutions. And so in this module, students explore some useful ways to break down larger problems and to write readable and successful programs. So students are introduced to functions um, and learning how to write comments in their code. So really just learning how to communicate some of the their their code and writing detailed comments about what it is doing. So when other when their peers or their teachers are, are, are reading their code, they sort of understand the thought process that the student was going through as they were writing their code. And then they also learn just proper naming of, of functions and, and other programming um, variables. Uh, so they really get to just practice, you know, you can't just name a function anything you'd like, it sort of needs to make sense uh, with the with the program. So everything is here in this in, the, in this module. And then in the fourth module, we have controlling Tracy with variables. So this module teaches students how to work with variables, how to define them, how to initialize them, and then also how to create a variable that can hold user input. So they, they create um, programs where they, they require the input from, from the user, and then they take that information and then they use that to create something cool with their, with their program. So you can see here that Tracy is sort of creating those, those lines and in the console at the bottom, sort of the, the questions for the input are all in Spanish. And so, yeah, so students really do get to practice a little bit of both. They use their Spanish for some of the, the, the input, but then, for, sorry, for some of the questions and then for some of the input that they'll need to receive, it still needs to be in English. So they do get to practice 
both English and Spanish as they're going through the course. And then the fifth module is called Making Decisions. And students learn how to use if else statements here and then also while loops. And then they instruct Tracy to make decisions based on, on conditions. So uh, again, using words like while and, and if, else, uh, for, in, these are all English words uh, that they get to practice while they're going through the course. But then when they create some sort of variable or function, uh, the course is, is, is set up so that those words are expected to be sort of in, in Spanish. And so they get to they get to practice a little bit of both um, English and Spanish as they're going through the course. Uh, but yeah, in, in this module, it gets a little bit more, more challenging once they start working with, with while loops. So it's definitely a, a fun and an exciting module to go through. And then uh, the last sort of official mo module in, in the course is, is Desafios de, de Tracy, which is Tracy Challenges. And in this one, they sort of just put together everything that they've learned throughout the course and all of the concepts that were covered in the, in the modules before. And then they use it to uh, solve these advanced puzzles in, in Tracy. So they can get pretty cool looking like this uh, checkerboard here. And so, yeah, so students just uh, get together. They do a lot of collaborative programming in, in this module. So a lot of working together to solve these challenges. And yeah, it's just a combination of everything that, that they've learned uh, throughout, the, throughout the course. So uh, before we move into sort of like the more of the resources and how to access some of the material, I wanted to just show an example of what an, an exercise could look like and just some of the, the extra sort of supports that we offer in, in, in the actual course. So, uh, so yeah, so here's just a course. Um, I'm going to look at the functions lesson. And this exercise here is called Una Pulsera, which is a, a bracelet. And so in this exercise, Tracy wants a, a bracelet for, for their birthday. And that's sort of what, what the instructions is sort of the, the theme. And we have all the details here, all in Spanish. Uh, it's a hint here in Spanish. And then we get hit click, get started. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Make the whole window a little bit bigger. Okay, so the first thing that's pretty cool is in our quick docs. Uh, if you use code HS before, you've noticed that we have a quick doc section. Uh, well, that's also been translated and it's in Spanish. So students can look here and just get a, a bit of like a, an extra support if they need it to, to see. Um, uh, to sort of get them started with, with their with their program. So um, it says here, you'll need to use a function Y and a loop in your code. Uh, so now students know that they need to use a function and a loop in their code. So it kind of helps them get started. Uh, and so there's a little bit more information there, but that's like a cool piece that's in all of our exercises. And then if we click check code, uh, we're not gonna be able to pass any, any uh, graders right now, but if we click check code, uh, what I want to focus on is just that all the messages are also in Spanish. So students will know as they're going through what are some things that, that are missing. So they know that they got the X, they didn't pass, but more importantly, they know exactly what the problem is. So it says you should have a function in your code. And this one says you should have a loop in your code. And so students can read those and then understand where uh, they need to go make adjustments. So that's one cool thing about it. And so if we go and get the solution, I'll just go ahead and grab this. And I'll just paste that there and then I'll run that. Tracy is creating the bracelet. Uh, we can check code now, we should pass everything. Uh, and so, yeah, so they still get the messages all in, all in Spanish. The comments here are also in Spanish and yeah, so the, the requirements for the program were also sort of in Spanish. So dibuja circulos is draw circles. Um, so they don't have to worry about naming their function something in, in English per se. Uh, they could just name it in, in, in Spanish. And so that removes sort of that confusion um, or sort of that extra challenge that, that they might run into. You know, and as a teacher, if you think that they should name it in, in English, then that, that could also, also be done. So a lot, a lot to... It's, it's very customizable um, in that sense. And then, okay, yeah, so that, so most of the exercises are, are like that. Um, so you'll have all of that uh, added support there. Okay, so 
how to access the materials. And so that's kind of the course and where you can access it is if you go to codehs.com slash course slash Spanish underscore Tracy, you can find this overview page where you can look at sort of the modules, a little bit more details about them. Uh, you can access the, the full course and then you can also access the syllabus uh, through that overview page, but you can also visit the syllabus directly. You go to codehs.com slash syllabus slash 18151 and then that's sort of like a way more detailed uh, uh, page of all the info about the course. Uh, if, if, if you want to look, look at that, is everything that we talked about here today is, is in there, uh, but you could also uh, go there and review it um, from the syllabus or the course overview page. And so it was been developed uh, back in January. It's available now. So if uh, you'd like to jump in today or anytime this week or whenever you feel like uh, you, you're interested to test it out, uh, it is available uh, to be used. And I think, yeah, that, that's sort of the big picture of the course, but I would love to answer any questions if there are any. No questions right now, but this is Awesome. I am so excited about this. We've had so many teachers asking for so long uh, for, you know, especially a, a, something in Tracy and Python to be in Spanish. So this is perfect. Love seeing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right, Lori. We already have a Spanish uh, introduction to JavaScript with Carol. And this sort of helps uh, expand that. Now we have like a Spanish introduction to, to Python using using Tracy and there's also an English version of this course so they can go hand in hand in the same classroom. Uh, you know, students don't have to be learning something completely different. Uh, they could be learning the exact same thing. I absolutely love this. It's awesome. Cool. Uh, does anybody have any questions yet? No questions so far. Um, and I will say, if you have questions after this webinar, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always more than happy to help. You can reach out to either Alex or myself directly, or you can always uh, drop a line to support and they'll be more than happy to help as well, or can route you to either of us to help. So, um, and that is just help at codehs.com. And you can email them at any point for any help that you might need. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Whenever questions come up, send them in. I'm more than happy to talk more about this course. I'm really passionate about it. So I would love to help, uh, you know, teachers so they can help their students uh, as they go through this course. And yeah, so lastly, just we have some upcoming uh, webinars. Uh, so we're on a spree. We have a lot of webinars coming up. And so the next one is Introduction to Computer Science in C++. That'll be to April, on Thursday, April 27th at 3 p.m. And then we also have a Nevada Advanced Computer Science One course, and that'll be Tuesday, May 9th at 3 p.m. Central. Perfect. If you head out to codehs.com slash free PD, you're going to see these uh, upcoming courses or upcoming webinars. Um, and also keep an eye on that page because we will be announcing our summer lineup for free virtual workshops very soon. Um, I'm thinking by the end of this week, you're going to start seeing some of those pop up and we have a huge lineup for the summer. Um, Alex, I was just thinking that I want to invite you to pop into a couple of the Python ones to, uh, share this Tracy course again. So I think that would be a great time to, uh, make sure that all of our teachers know about Tracy and Espanol as well. So yeah. Yeah, we have lots of things coming up. So definitely head out to codeh codehs.com slash free PD to check out what we have now and watch that page for those summer lineups to start rolling on out. And if there's no questions, I think we can go ahead and wrap up for today. We hope you enjoyed getting an overview of uh, Tracy and Espanol and uh, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions. Alex, um, it's just so exciting that uh, that we have this addition to our course catalog now. So thank you so much for sharing this information about it today. Of course. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>